Something has gone wrong with Tesla's new gigafactory in Mexico. Or more specifically, we should say their plan to build a factory in Mexico. That's the problem, really. There is no Giga Mexico. Not yet, but maybe not ever. The truth is that there's a lot more to this story than just building a factory or not building a factory. Giga Mexico is the story of Tesla's past, present, and future all wrapped into one. The truth can be funny at times, but it can also just be straight up disappointing. Let's begin with the promise of Giga Mexico. This was no small thing. The factory was originally pitched as Tesla's opportunity for another giant leap forward. On March 1st, 2023, Elon Musk announced to the world that Tesla would build their next gigafactory in the Mexican state of Nuevo León. It would be the company's largest construction project to date, double the size of their Austin plant, and triple the vehicle output. At the time, it was said that Giga Mexico would be built in just 12 to 15 months, only slightly more time than it had taken the company to get their Shanghai China production up and running significantly faster than Giga Berlin, and even Giga Texas. Clearly, Tesla had mastered the art of the Gigafactory by now, and it would be full steam ahead from here on out. But in June 2024, almost exactly 15 months after that announcement, Musk was questioned about why there had still been little to no sign of any progress being made at Tesla's factory site in Nuevo León, and Elon replied that Giga Mexico has been put on pause. This marked a pretty solid blow to many expectations about the future of Tesla that had been solidified by Elon and his crew just one year before. Mexico was pitched as the birthplace of Tesla's next generation vehicle, the much anticipated affordable compact car, and even though it was unsaid at the time, just by association that would link the company's upcoming robotaxi vehicle to the Mexico plant as well. These next generation platforms would be constructed on a revolutionary new unboxed manufacturing process, one that would drastically reduce the time, cost, and floor space involved in building a new car, a kind of parallel manufacturing philosophy that would mark the biggest single change to automotive production lines since the days of Henry Ford. The hype was real, but as the weeks and months rolled on, we started to get the inclination that the factory itself might be a little less than real. Is it possible that Giga Mexico failed because Tesla chose the wrong location? Depends who you ask. A lot of people would say that building anywhere outside of the USA was a grave mistake, but there are perfectly logical reasons for choosing Mexico as Tesla's next step. Money is an obvious one. It's cheaper to do anything in Mexico than it is in the US. Not only does Mexican labor tend to come at a lower cost, you can also get some pretty amazing deals on some other very important utilities such as electricity. The price of energy for industrial use in Nuevo León can be as little as 4 cents per kilowatt hour. Average cost in the US would be more like 16 cents per kilowatt hour, and in a European nation like Germany, you're looking at over 40 cents depending on the exchange rate. Speaking of Germany, there's been a long documented and still ongoing battle between Tesla and various levels of government bureaucracy in play around Giga Berlin. Elon Musk has said that this red tape is what led to significant delays in getting that factory up and running. Building in Texas proved to be a lot easier. Tesla got a much bigger factory up and running in a shorter time frame, but nothing compares to how fast Tesla has been able to move in China, where there are pretty much zero obstacles to industry. Nuevo León presents a very similar opportunity. The state's capital city of Monterrey has already been well established as a home of industry, a factory town a place where companies from all over the world have set up shop to manufacture everything from electronics to automobiles to airplanes to food and beverages, and that's given rise to supporting industries that produce raw materials like steel and oil, and a network of local suppliers that feed the major manufacturers. Auto parts suppliers are already a huge economic sector in Nuevo León. Many of them are already working for Tesla and shipping their products north into the U.S., there's even an express lane at the Nuevo León border crossing specifically for trucks carrying Tesla components. This concentration of industry has led to an exceptional private education system in the area, home to many of the top universities and technical schools in all of Mexico, meaning that there is already local engineering talent in the area. 
It's so good that Tesla has already been doing regular recruiting trips down to Monterey to try and draw talent up to the US. Now here's where things actually get funny. As if all that wasn't enough of a reason for Tesla to be in Mexico, the governor of Nuevo León, 36-year-old Samuel Garcia, is a hardcore Elon Musk fanboy. I mean, he gave Tesla their own express lane at the border crossing. That's not exactly standard practice, but Samuel and his family have also been known to wear Tesla merch on social media. They've both joked about naming their children after Elon Musk. Samuel bought his wife a Tesla Model X for Valentine's Day, and it's been said that Governor Garcia was the first Cybertruck owner in the entire nation of Mexico. The first legal one, at least. So if anything, it's a bit disappointing that Tesla has not shown the same enthusiasm for Nuevo León as it has shown for them. It really does appear to be a perfect fit, except picture this, your deal is nearly closed, but there's one last hurdle, the security review. We've all been there, endless back and forth between you, your security team, and the customer causing deals to stall out. It's frustrating, right? But what if you could speed that process up? That's where Vanta comes in. With Vanta's questionnaire automation, go-to-market teams can complete security reviews up to five times faster, helping you close deals in record time. No more waiting around and no more missed opportunities. Over 8,000 global companies, including big names like Zoom Info, Smart Recruiters, and Noibu, trust Vanta to streamline their security questionnaires and keep deals moving. Ready to see it in action? Check out Vanta's self-guided product tour. No sign-up required. Just click the link down below in the description and experience the future of security reviews today. Let's talk about the location that Tesla chose for Giga Mexico. The company purchased a gigantic plot of land. It's nearly double the size of their Austin property at 4,200 acres. It's basically a valley between two mountain ranges with a major highway running through the center. Tesla has only ever released this one rendered image, but thanks to drone pilot Adrian CG, who's local to the area, we can get a little bit more perspective on the landscape. When you look at Tesla's rendering, it would appear that the factory is set on a nice flat plateau. But looking at Adrian's images, you start to realize that there is no flat land in this valley. Everything slopes up from the roadway, so there is going to have to be a significant earth leveling project by Tesla that is going to involve cutting deep into the surface, which in this area is pretty much solid rock. The climate around Monterey is probably best described as semi-arid. It's not a dried up desert, but there is definitely no abundance of water either. The region typically gets around 30 days of rain per year. The Monterey metropolitan area gets its fresh water from the three reservoirs fed by the Rio San Juan River and rainwater from the occasional tropical storm. There's also a limited amount of groundwater that can be pumped up from underground aquifers. Water can be a precious commodity in this region. In March 2022, just one year prior to the Giga Mexico announcement, the taps of Monterey ran dry caused by a period of severe drought. By the summer, people were fighting over buckets of water rationed out by the local government. And during this time period, the people of Monterey took notice that even while their water was restricted, the nearby Heineken and Coca-Cola factories never stopped bottling drinks. Many of them got pretty upset about that, and rightfully so. It's a pretty familiar situation to what Tesla has already dealt with over in Germany, and the company has been able to learn a lot from that experience. The water usage at Giga Berlin is well under the factory's approved limit, and it's almost entirely recycled water that's used for the industrial process. The biggest freshwater use by far at the Giga factory is the bathrooms, and Tesla has already made a similar arrangement for water use in Mexico. The factory will only use recycled wastewater for their industrial needs, and water usage at Giga Mexico would be the lowest of any automotive factory in the world per vehicle. The problem there still comes when we factor in the volume of said vehicles. Tesla wants to hit 3 million cars built at Giga Mexico, so even if they're using less water per car, they are building a hell of a lot more cars than any other factory on the planet. Now there is a solution. Tesla would obtain all of their water directly from the Nuevo León wastewater treatment plant, so the Giga factory would have no effect on the area's reservoirs or aquifers. The complication being that the water treatment plant is 18 kilometers away from the Tesla build site, meaning that there needs to be a pipeline built connecting the two. 
Even then, it's likely that the treatment plant will not be able to supply enough water for Tesla's needs in the long term, meaning that the total capacity of water treatment will then need to be expanded in order to keep up. So there are pros and cons to any decision, and in the case of Giga Mexico, it would appear as though the positives outweigh the negatives. And yet, there is no Giga Mexico. Elon Musk has made some effort to offer up an explanation, saying on Tesla's June earnings call, we are currently on pause on Giga Mexico. I think we need to just see where things stand after the election. Trump has said that he will put heavy tariffs on vehicles produced in Mexico, so it doesn't make sense to invest a lot in Mexico if that is going to be the case, so we will kind of need to see how things play out politically. Now, politics is a factor for sure. But for Elon to say that Donald Trump is the primary reason for Tesla not following through with the Mexico plan feels a bit off. It's not like we didn't know full well in March 2023 that Donald Trump would be a frontrunner in the presidential race. And I'm not American, but I don't find it the least bit surprising that Trump would announce a policy to tax imports from Mexico. It seems like something that a forward-thinking company would be more prepared for. Not that Tesla was ever really serious about Giga Mexico anyway. Let's be real here for a second. If anyone at Tesla was being sincere on March 1st, 2023, when they said that Giga Mexico was coming, that it was important to the future of the company, that it would be built in as little as 12 months, then on March 2nd, 2023, Tesla crews would have started clearing and leveling the ground. They would have started building an 18 kilometer long water pipe. Things would have happened. Looking at Adrian's most recent drone flyover of the Tesla property in Monterey, the only discernible construction to be found is a few partially casted pillars for a highway overpass and one poorly laid sheet of asphalt with some junk on it. Me and the boys here at the studio could have done more in 18 months than the mighty Tesla. I don't think it's too weird to call that a bit disappointing. You can't say you're putting something on pause that you never started in the first place. I'm left wondering why Tesla even announced this Mexico project so publicly and with so much enthusiasm. It feels like something that should have stayed internal until they had a real plan, or maybe leaked out in a vague post from Elon Musk. It's almost like Mexico was the last gasp of Tesla fighting to remain a car company. An idea built on the mentality that to grow the company, Tesla needs to build more cars. And then Elon came back from his working holiday at Twitter and said, no, we're gonna grow the company by making AI and robots. Then he fired everyone who disagreed with him, spent all of the Giga Mexico money on supercomputer chips, and now we're here, wherever that is. It's definitely a Tesla that's in transition from the old ways into something new, something that's not quite fully formed yet. For the short term, at least, Elon is pretty convinced that everything Tesla would have done at Giga Mexico can actually just be done at Giga Texas instead. The unboxed production line, the robo-taxi, and maybe just forget about that whole 25k Tesla thing. It's not cancelled, we're just not doing it anymore, that's different. Robots though. Anyway, maybe just a periodic reminder that when things sound too good to be true, they probably are. Don't believe it until you see it and don't take anything said by rich people or politicians too seriously.